Good morning, everyone. Good morning, I'd like to welcome you here to St. Joseph Parish as we celebrate this beautiful feast of the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Our Mass intentions for this weekend are for Patricia McHenry, a special intention for Cheryl Monshine, and for Sister Christine Alfari. So if you could keep all of them in your prayers this weekend, I know they would be most grateful. As we um, continue to move through the month of June, uh, we are um, making sure that we can keep um, all who come into our beautiful parish as safe as possible. So we've um, taken a gradual approach as we kind of determine the number of people that would be in the church. So we have about um, 90 seats that are six feet apart. So obviously when we come into the church, if you're sitting um, next to a spouse or family members are sitting together, <clears throat> we can include more. When I um, checked with a Holy Spirit and St. Rayfield's and my um, classmates at our other parishes, um, most have reported that it's been about 100 people or under, so I think that we'll all be fine. Um, we have decided and been encouraged by the diocese to continue to live cast our masses. So our daily masses will continue to be live casted as well as the 4.30 and 8.30. That will then provide an opportunity for people to um, come up into our um, sacrament tent and then receive Holy Communion if they still feel uncomfortable um, coming into the church. We know that people are all over the spectrum from um, very comfortable um, to knowing that they have underlying medical conditions or perhaps um, just older age or people in their households that are in the same um, predicament of maybe having a higher chance of really being affected by the virus. So um, we're going to then just record those two Sunday Masses. The 11 o'clock Mass so that um, families with um, younger children, it might be difficult for them to um, keep a mask on, um, will be celebrated outside. So the priest will be in the tent. One can park their car um, in the parking lot, and if you pack a chair, you can then bring the chair um, in the area in front of the tent and then um, celebrate Mass outside. So last week we distributed about 150 communions at the 11 o'clock. And at the 4.30 and 8.30 last week, we distributed about 100. Uh, we've been distributing communion during the week in the sacrament tent as well, and those have numbered around 60. So we do still get hundreds of people that watch our stream mass, so we're trying to do a model that includes both. Because of, um, of the streaming at these masses and really um, just people's safety, we are going to distribute Holy Communion right after Mass. So um, Father Turner is here with us today. He is a professor at the seminary and um, is offered to help me um, throughout the summer, um, every other month, every other week or so. So um, he's going to pray the prayer of spiritual communion for those who are at home that cannot come. Then he's going to pray the prayer after communion and offer the final blessing. After that, I'm going to invite the ministers to come forward who will assist with the distribution of Holy Communion. Um, during the Our Father, they would have washed their hands and sanitized them. And then Father Turning and I will take our places here in the church, and two other ministers will go out into the tent. Um, last evening, we had about 90 communions. <clears throat> about a third of those were inside here, the church, and the other two-thirds um, people still watched at home. So I suspect as the summer goes on and people's comfort, um, you know, continues to increase that those numbers might change. So it is a very dynamic process and it's difficult um, to communicate instantly with people as these things progress. So I certainly appreciate um, your patience. When we uh, drafted that letter, you know, I had to do it in a few days. Um, and then it's about a five-day process to get a letter mailed and distributed to our household. So um, we're going to try our best to just um, stay on a plan of gradual reopening. So again, I thank you for all the ways that you've helped that. <clears throat> what we've done in the church is decided to 
um, do our best to create one-way traffic, similar to many of the grocery stores. So the communion lines will be at the Mary and Joseph aisles. Um, you can sanitize your hands. Sometimes the sanitizer takes a little bit of time to dry, so um, this top one here is for like the first couple of rows, but you're welcome to use the one up the aisle. Um, right in front of the pillar, you can stop. The minister will say the body of Christ. You can say amen. Approach the minister. Receive Holy Communion. Take off your mask. Receive as you step to the side. And then if you choose, um, you can leave through an exit door. Um, so you can go that way or out that way or go down the uh, middle aisle. I put the, the stickers on the flat tiles because I didn't know how well they would stick to that more um, bumpy middle tile, but you don't need to walk along the edge. You just need to um, walk down the aisle. You can go out the gathering area if you'd like. I know I'm always tempted to talk to people if I do that, though. So, so as the month continues, um, next weekend uh, we'll start weekend masses for anyone who would like to attend, and Monday, um, tomorrow, we'll start with daily mass.